And welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us today. We are sitting back down with a parish councilman. Uh, took a little break there. We talked about frenzies at the sex shop and uh, selling sex and novelty items. Uh, there was an interesting process going through the parish council for that. Now we're going to talk about zoning. So good morning, sir. Appreciate you being here. Introduce yourself for us. Uh, Gary Frog Talbert, Councilman District 2, representing Watson in the northwest corner of the parish. And we're going to talk about zoning, which is sort of an interesting process. So I want to get into first, um, you know, there was a push in 2013. And when I say a push, it was more of a whimper because uh, there was a master plan presented. Uh, the parish used some grant money to pay for it, and they adopted it by resolution, which is non-binding. You and I have talked about binding and non-binding before. But um, it, it fast forward to a couple of years ago, and, and Mr. Tracy Gerlinghouse of District 7 kind of made the initial, we're, we're running a little late, we need to do something about this. And y'all formed a master plan committee. Now that kind of went out, sorry to say, with sort of a, Sort of a whimper because of some financial issues. So you want to talk us through that real quick? Yeah, you know, we formed a master plan committee, and I, I think there was some confusion of what we really thought the intent was. I, I really thought that they would take the existing master plan, uh, look at implementation, you know, how we could implement it, uh, how we could implement zoning that, you know, existed in the original master plan. Shoot, right off the bat, it's like, oh, this master plan is antiquated. Well, you know what? Every study is antiquated in short time. The problem with the master plan is it required certain things that the parish just doesn't have the money for. You know, it was talked about protecting future corridors, you know, for expansion and stuff like that. Hell, you got to go buy people's property. You know what I'm saying? You can't just, you can't just say, you know, we're going to, you can't build in this area. You know, you, you got to go acquire that stuff. And there's just, there's no money available for that. So to spend whatever it is on another master plan, to me, felt kind of, you know, redundant. And, and the, the outcome was going to be similar. And um, there was still no money to go acquire these right-of-ways and these servitudes to protect, you know, putting roads in in the future. So I really thought that they were going to implement, you know, let's talk about how to implement zoning. You know, uh, it, it's it's kind of a political hot potato. There's some of us who feel that zoning is beneficial to our district. There are others who don't feel that zoning is beneficial to their district. However, I'm going to respectfully disagree. And, I, and I'm going to say there are districts that the predominantly zoning within them would be rural. Right. Well, what does rural zoning mean? It means that when that guy who lives next door to the concrete batch plant came to us and complained in rural zoning, that industrial business would probably be hard pressed to be placed in a rural zoned area. Um, you know, the, the, the person who complained about the apartment complex in a rural area, it would be hard, you know, multifamily is, is, is not available to go into rural. You know, there is a density difference in, in rural and residential in most places that, that have zoning. So if you have rural, you do gain some protections. Uh, however, you have some restrictions, you know, and it's it kind of goes back to, I want to be able to tell you what you can do with your property, but I don't want you to be able to tell me what I can do with mine. You know, I don't want sure. I don't want you to build a concrete plant next to me, but if I want to sell mine to somebody to do something, I don't want you to tell me... I can't do it. So, you know, it's, I mean, it's the free state, been called a free state for years. And, 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 and those are some of the things that exist. Uh, so I thought the master plan committee could kind of look at implementation, you know, how we do it, present a plan to the council to vote up and down without the councilman getting beat up over months and months of debating, you know, what how, the best way of implementation. It didn't work. So guess what? The council's probably going to have to take it up. We're going to have to debate it in ordinance. We're going to have people come and, you know, blast us before the finished product is produced. And, and, but it's just part of it. As you signed up for the job, you just take the heat, you know, but, but ultimately that's what's going to happen. And we're going to move forward. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the debate will be how to implement it. 
You know, how, what is the process? I, I've got my own ideas, and I'm sure other councilmen have their ideas, and we'll all talk about them and try to merge them into one. Sure. Before we get into your ideas, uh, just want to say that y'all have adopted the 2013 master plan by ordinance, correct? A- as much as that means anything, but you did. We, we we adopted it. We ain't funded it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it was it was kind of like, you know, w- we laid hands on it, but we didn't really mean for it to be implemented because we didn't. There was no money set forward to do any of the things. I mean, there's some costs associated with, you know, implementing that thing other than just land acquisition, just some of the requirements of, you know, some personnel and stuff. So, you know, it's a it's a slippery slope. We'll we'll I think ultimately what we want to do is try to get, you know, some ordinance that addresses zoning in the parish, uh, that the majority of the council can can approve. And then I think I think the way the ordinance is going to be structured is that you have to have those individuals whose property is affected have a, a time period to appeal how you how their property is owned. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's going to require hiring some professionals to help. I mean, I know I don't have the ability to go to every piece of property in Council District 2 and say, oh, this is commercial, this is residential, this is, you know, rural. I don't have that time. I don't have that expertise, you know, but. So at some point in time, there is going to have to be some money put forth on it, and and we just got to figure out where that comes from. Sure, and you know it's it. Right now, uh, we we did get a chance to sit down with Councilman Girling House on a Sunday, right after uh, daylight savings time. That was fun, but we we discussed a little bit of the initial process. He has sat down with Parish President Leighton Ricks as well as Eddie Idell from Alvin Fairburn, uh, and there there seems to be a little bit of a consensus on a process going forward. Uh, which would be to try to produce some maps um, based on, you know, what's currently happening on a plat-by-plat basis in certain areas. Uh, Mr. Gerlinghouse said that, it, you know, he expected this to be pushed forward by the end of the year. It seems like a lofty goal, but we'll see. And, you know, and he admitted it was a pretty lofty goal. But, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that seemed to be sort of differing is uh, the parish seems to be um, intent on first moving forward with trying to do parish-wide zoning. I know that, uh, at least within the 2013 master plan, uh, the proposition was to have a vote-by-vote, district-by-district to do zoning. So uh, with all of those things being said, you mentioned earlier that you kind of have your own ideas. You care to give us sort of a 32,000 feet idea of what your ideas are? You know, I, I think I think you gotta have, if you gotta have a professional going to make a map, and and he needs to, you know, based on based on what's existing, what what appears to be surrounding it, what the you know what the potential. I mean, if you're on if you're on Highway 16, you know, you could have a house, but it's really has the potential to be commercial property. So you know, I. I think there's some things that are kind of simple. You know, running state highways could be, you know, deemed commercial. Uh, if something's residential, it's residential. You know, if something's multifamily now, it'll be multifamily. Uh, I don't know that we need to zone anything multifamily that doesn't exist already. Uh, I think that process needs to go before planning to to request a change. Um, but anyway, I think that, you know, the engineer comes up with a map. Engineer, government planner, whoever whoever does it, comes up with a map. Uh, we come up with, you know, different levels: rural, residential, commercial, industrial. Are there subdivisions of that? You know, is there is there is there multifamily within residential? Is there you know single family within residential? You know, we typically in other parishes, res you know, a rural has a density requirement and some restrictions on commercial, uh, restrictions on industrial, so that, you know, you could, even though it's rural, it has some limitations on what can be done. I think you get all those rules, you get the map, the council adopts it, and I think part of the ordinance is going to require, you know, a period for the property owner to appeal what was set forth by the council. You know, I could, I could have a piece of property, and they say, "Well, that's rural." You know, I mean, I own I own a house in a subdivision I currently live in. It's obviously residential. You mm-hmm. know, I also, my wife and acquired, you know, a little over six acres on the Ben Road. It's got a little house that we're remodeling. 
you know, somebody could determine that, that that's really rural, you know. Uh, and so m- me as the property owner might decide that it's really not rural. I want it to be residential. I could then appeal that, you know, to the planning commission or whatever or through a period of time and, and, you know, have a hearing. But to just tell people what their property is and give them no ability to come and, and, and try to change it seems to be overbearing. However, at the same time, we can't pass the buck to the citizens every time on whether something's done or not. Mm -hmm. You know, tax elections, absolutely. I mean, it's by law that they need to, 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 to have a voice on, you know, that stuff with respect to policy, uh, uh, you elected a group of individuals to represent you and they're either if they represent you, then the majority is going to be happy with the result. There's going to be an unhappy group no matter what. Uh, if if they don't represent the majority, then they're going to get their butt beat the next time they run for election, you know, for re-election. So, you know, it's a simple deal. Represent your district. You know, look out for the benefits of the parish as a whole. But ultimately, you know, every time I vote, I look out what's best for the parish. But I vote what's best for Watson. Right. And I kind of got to, I kind of got to combine those two and analyze, you know, but, but ultimately I'm, I'm represented, I, I'm put in office to represent the people of district two. And if I abandon the people of district two to vote for the parish as a whole, then I'm really not representing them, you know? So it's, it's a, it's a balancing act, but so I think ultimately that's kind of what, you know, the, everybody's got to look in their district. Everybody's got to figure out, you know, what, what do the people in my district think, uh, what's beneficial. The only thing I can tell you is that there have been several issues come before the council. And every time, if there was zoning that existed, it wouldn't be an issue. Whether it be the gun range, whether it be a concrete plant, whether it be a gravel pit, you know, any of those issues. Zoning addresses those, and the council doesn't have to act on them, and, and people have a way, you know, to, to be protected. And so, consequently, I, I just think that if people sit back and look and quit thinking about, you're not going to tell me what I can do with my property, but look back and say, you know, man, I, I lose a little freedom with what I can do, but I gain tons of protection. You know, then and and then make the make the analysis individually, and and I think that's how you got to approach it. Well, and <coughs> I'm glad you brought that up because that was kind of going to be where I was going to segue into was you know that a lot of people have come to the council saying you know I don't I don't like this development coming here you know I don't like this I don't like that, but from y'all's perspective, from a law perspective, y'all's hands are pretty much tied as long as there's not asking for variances or waivers or anything like that. If they meet the the lay of the law, they get to move forward. And so with zoning, y'all have a little bit more say in, in how those things go. Look, the, the difference between zoning and not having zoning is amazing. <clears throat> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk back something that happened several years ago in East Baton Rouge Parish. East Baton Rouge Parish has got a master plan. Mm -hmm. They had a section of property along the river that was zoned industrial three or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was zoned for industrial, commercial, whatever. A barge cleaning company acquired that piece of property. And And the zoning for what they were doing was well within the guidelines of what had been set forth in the master plan. I think they needed to modify the zoning a little bit, but it was it was it was set forth for industrial. But it abutted some pretty influential neighborhoods. So even though the the request for zoning was conforming to the master plan, you know, that the, they needed to modify the industrial zoning just a little bit. It was conforming to the master plan. Public perception and public pressure or whatever killed that rezone and made that barge cleaning facility not a possibility. Now, you know, how how can the public come talk to us without zoning and 
we tell them that if it follows the guidelines of the law, there's absolutely nothing we can do. We have to approve it. Yet because zoning exists and and people's opinion all of a sudden matters, you know, it's just, I mean, you got to figure it out. But but it, But it seems to me that from what I've seen over my years of observing, you know, different, you know, cities and different parishes and the way things work, that those with zoning and those with, a, you know, uh, you got to go before a planning commission, you got to advertise, you got to request and public pressure, you know, has, has tons of influence. Mm -hmm. And so I think that those individuals who, who talk about, you know, we need less subdivisions. We need, you know, we need to restrict some. Zoning's going to give you an opportunity or a voice to actually have some impact. You know what I'm talking about? Under the current guidelines, I mean, I'm just going to tell you, I might not like, there was a subdivide, there was a a subdivide or a re, re, you know, deal on Highway 16 the other day that I was totally against. Because ultimately we're going to end up with six trailers and what has the potential to be a nice commercial piece of property in the future and, and a tremendous sales tax revenue generator. But as it is, it's going to be chopped up. It's going to be sold. And, and I'll bet my bottom dollar there's six trailer parts, six trailers in there, rental trailers, you know. And so we're going to create a mini trailer park. And, and but guess what? Nobody was asking for a waiver. It met the guidelines. The, the 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 gentleman doing it challenged us. If you don't like it, change the law. Yeah. And 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 you're back to the point that you can only make the law so strict, you know, and 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 so it's 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 a conundrum. If but I believe if we had zoning that people's voice the the, the three words, you know, not beneficial to the, you know, community, the health what is it? Health, safety and, and welfare, welfare of the community. Mm -hmm. I think would carry some carry some input. As without zoning, it's kind of hard to say that it's not. You know, we could stop something because it's not beneficial to the health, safety, and welfare of the community. And so, I think that people need to look at you know the bigger picture, and 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 you know not worry about what's happening in your little rice bowl and look at what's happening over the whole table. So you know, I might get blasted over that, but I think at some point in time. You just got to look to the, you know, the betterment of the whole. And sometimes, you know, you might not necessarily happy with the 100% of the final product, but 80% of it's pretty damn good. So, you know, you kind of move forward. So that that's kind of where we're at. So, you know, before we wrap up, want to bring this right into what we talked about before. Uh, for some of you that might have watched our previous podcast that we just recorded about 20 minutes ago. Um, Gary brought up that zoning would have helped with the frenzy situation, and it also would have helped or will help if if certain things move forward, clarifying that ordinance. Um, tell us, you know, you spoke about that before. Maybe we'll actually get people to go back and watch that. Or I don't know. People may find that one more entertaining. <laughs> But, you know, tell us a little bit about what you said then about zoning and how that would help I, clarify that ordinance. Okay, so so I don't know if it, I don't know if people pay attention, you know, whatever. New Orleans typically, you know, a lot of the street clubs are, you know, on one street in Bourbon Street, you know, mm -hmm. on one street in the quarter. You might go to Atlanta and and there might be four or five, you know, you know, strip clubs together and you go look and it's kind of an industrial area. It's right. really not where people live. Mm -hmm. It's not where people shop, but it's not far off the beaten path. But it, but it, it is something that in a given night is not going to impact people's lives around them, except for those that choose to go to that spot, you know? So, so what you see is that, you know, if we had zoning, we could say that, you know, those activities, need to happen in an area zoned industrial. And then and then go look, where is there industrial zoning in the parish? You know, wh where is there industry in the parish? And and where would it allow those facilities to be constructed? You know, and so if we do a, if we do zoning and everything that's zoned industrial except for some industrial parks is already occupied, then to go build those facilities, you've got to buy a piece of property and change the zoning. 
sometimes that's easy and sometimes that's difficult, you sure. know? And so, and, and we've talked about uh, public pressure has more, has more impact in zoning, you know, in, when you have zoning laws and, and how, what does and doesn't get built over, you know, lack of zoning laws. So uh, I think in this situation, we could have amended the ordinance to talk about where they can be built. What type of zoning you have to have to build strip club, adult novelty store, you know, any of those type facilities. And then it would have been easy, you know, just say you got to be in this type of zoning. As it is now, we're going to have to look at distances from schools, you know, churches, playgrounds, rooftops, you know, figure out, figure out how we're, what, what's acceptable and what's not and, and move forward. Right. So. Uh, again, a conversation with zoning with uh, Mr. Gary Frog Talbert. Appreciate you joining us, sir. If you want to give us another outro, we'd appreciate it. Uh, anytime. I'm, you know, I, I try to, I try to, you know, think about the whole parish when I talk about it. But like I told you, I'm, I'm representing District Two first and foremost. And so, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us again. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us and having a listen or having a watch. Uh, here for the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show. Please remember, we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. And we are online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. One last time, we appreciate you joining us, and we'll catch you next time.